it's Lindsay. Welcome back to The Wandering Reader. Today I'm going to be talking to you about all of my craft updates. This is episode number five of Picking Up The Threads. So for those of you that are new to my channel, this is a video that I do every so often where I update you guys on what crafty bits that I have been working on. So I am a big crocheter, I like cross stitch and I do a little bit of knitting as well. So yeah, just a bit of an update on what I've been doing. It's been a while since I posted the last episode of this. I'm just looking down at what day it was. I think it was in March. So it's been a few months since then. And mainly that's because I've been working on this one particular project that I am not able to show you guys. It is a present for somebody who probably will watch this video and I don't want them to see it before I've given it to them as a present. So the next time that I do an episode of this I will talk to you about that particular present then. So I've been solely focused on getting this one thing done. Finally got it done and that means that I can turn my attention to other things that I can work on basically. So I don't have any finished objects to share with you. I'm just going to share with you a load of works in progress. The first work in progress that I've got to show you is works in this, which is um, Starcraft Monet in the colourway Mountain Dawn. So, and that's what it looks like. It's a, um, what's it made of? A 50% premium acrylic and 50% cotton blend. Um, and I'm making the Summertime Tea by Tony Lipsy out of this. Um, the last time you saw it, I don't think was it was that different from what I'm going to show you now. But I'll show it to you anyway. So this time it has um, the sleeves on it. And I don't really know how different that is from the last time I showed it to you. Because it's been ages since I picked this up. Um, for no particular reason at all. Just because, like I said, I've been working exclusively on that other thing. Um, so I haven't really had time to pick this up. But now's the perfect time to get started on it again because as the title suggests, it's the perfect thing for to wear for summer. And I really want to do take it, want, want to wear it this summer and also take it with me on holiday as well. Um, really, really lovely pattern, really easy to get your head around. Um, I would say if you're a beginner, a, a complete beginner, you might find it a little bit challenging in terms of there are some things in here that you might not have come across but they're easily looked up on YouTube and things like that so I would say this is maybe for more of an advanced beginner um, but yeah really lovely pattern really easy to get your head around and I can't wait to get back to it okay the next thing I've got to show you is a um, cross stitch um, thing that I'm project that I'm working on and this is a, I can't remember what the name of the pattern is or the designer so I will leave a link to that in the description box down below but this is what it's supposed to be when it's finished it's kind of there we go um, so I also have the Ravenclaw one of this as well uh, but I'm working on the Hufflepuff one first because I'm Hufflepuff my husband is Ravenclaw so that's what it's supposed to look like when it's finished um, and without me losing my needle I should have really, let me just put it up here for a second. I don't have any needle minders and I really should get some. So this is what it currently looks like. I'm going to hold it up without, so that you can see the whole of it. So I finished off the badger. Let me just hold it like this so you can see. So the badger is done. Is that a bit too bright? It's kind of blowing out a little bit there you go and then I'm just working on the wording up here so I've done loyal and the word and again is that a bit easier for you to see mm, I don't know I don't know there we go um, yeah and I'm just working my way through the letters basically I was this was kind of like a morning project for me so um, Every time I eat my breakfast in the morning um, at the kitchen table, I work on a little bit of a letter. Um, so even while I was working on the secret project, um, I was still kind of doing a little bit of this in the morning. So, um, yeah, really enjoying this. And, yeah, it's another really easy pattern. Um, and, yeah, again, I can't wait to get that finished. I'm going to say that about everything in here. 
Okay, so I've darkened it a little bit up in here because the sun has decided to come out and it's been behind a cloud for like the entire day. So what should I show you next? Okay, next I'm gonna show you a crochet blanket that I'm working on for uh, my husband, Stefan. Ever since I finished my big massive um, patchwork kind of blanket, my beginner's crochet blanket, if it were, um, if you will, um, he has been wanting me to make something for him and he's mentioned a blanket for the couch a couple of times. So I'm doing a granny square blanket but it's this kind of granny square blanket so it's you start a granny in the middle um, and then you change colour every time you go another way around the outside and this just grows into a massive square and um, yeah you make it as big as you want basically so I'm just going to keep going until Stefan likes the size of it um, so I am using Starcraft Special DK for this and I've picked out eight colours so I've got um, white I've got um, duck egg then uh, mocha denim uh, silver midnight this is um, palma violet and lastly I've got cloud blue so I wanted to do some blue shades in it but I also wanted to have a few a, a few colours in there that were a little bit different hence like the palmer violet the mocha and then the white and the silver and um, just to kind of break up that blue and um, so yeah I'm really liking it so far um, it's obviously taking a little bit longer each time to do around um, but it's once you know what to do, it's so easy. And I can't remember, I, I uh, watched a video on YouTube to get started, just to remind myself of what to do. So I will link that video down below um, if you're interested in making something like this. Um, this is perfect for a beginner. Um, even with the colour changes, she explains it really well on the video that I watched how to do it. And actually, I learned a better way of doing colour changes than I had before. And so I was really, really happy with that. Yeah, so I'm just going to keep working away on that until I figure it's too big and then I'll stop and then weave in all of these ends, which will take me ages, no doubt. I might have to do some of those in between, otherwise they'll drive me insane at the end. But anyway, I forgot to say with that one that I'm using a 4mm crochet hook. And then the, I didn't say for the summertime tea. What have I got in here? This is a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook, um, but again, it talks to you about crochet hook sizes in the pattern for that one. And this one, I just basically followed what was on the label for um, the Starcraft, which is four millimeter. So yeah. Okay, this next project I'm making out of Lily Sugar and Cream. So I've got three colours. I've got white. Um, soft violet and I've got rose pink so that's what these look like I've never worked with this before this is a um, cotton it's a worsted weight cotton so it's 2.5 ounces 120 yards per ball and this is for I'm doing a crochet test of the Float Tote Min Mini, the Float Tote Mini, yeah, by um, Natalie Coons. Um, she's Nitty, Nitty Natty on Ravelry and Instagram, and I will um, leave a link to her Ravelry designer page down below. She also has a podcast on YouTube, which I will leave a link to down below. And I have done a crochet test for her before, so I did the Chevron wrap which I showed on the last episode and um, so she put a call out for this particular pattern and it was to make these float totes so she has a larger size of this on her Ravelry page and um, I've not made that one before but so this is for a couple of smaller sizes um, and I will hopefully have put a picture on the screen as to what these are going to look like um, and basically they're for projects um, well the larger one is designed to for you to kind of be a bit more organised if you've got more than one colour going on in a project at once or even if you just if you're like alternating skeins if you're using hand dyed yarn and things like that 
um, just to keep track of you know and not have those um, different strands of yarn twisting up and things like that so it's a really good idea um, this particular pattern test though is for um, a one it's a one skein tote and a two skein two skein tote and um, so even if you're not using it for a color change or anything like that it's just a really good way of organizing or like an extra little project bag that you can use or something like that so I've been working on the one skein size and I've made the little bucket that's going to go in the middle of the tote and the little sort of, I'm not really, the the bit that sits at the bottom that you um, that you put this on top of in the bag and um, so I've made those two um, and this is made with two strands of this cotton yarn held together so I held the um, the white and the pink together with this one and then obviously this is just the pink here and um, it's worked out really nicely it's really it's a really easy pattern to um, follow so far um, and of course I won't be able to leave a link to it to it in the comments below um, but I will leave a link to her Ravelry page um, and so I'm just making the um, one skein actual tote bag at the moment for those two to go in the one thing I will say is that sometimes this can be because especially because I'm holding two strands of this together it's quite tough so it sometimes can feel a bit a little bit tough to kind of get your hook into and I have had a little bit and I've seen people talk about this on, on Facebook groups crochet Facebook groups and things like that and I've never had it but I've had it rather against this finger here to the point where I've kind of got oh I need to have a little bit of a break because otherwise I'm going to get like a blister there or something like that so um yeah I would say just bear that in mind you can make this with any um you could probably make this with any cotton Iran yarn. I think this is Iran. Anyway, or what? No, I said it was worsted weight. It's worsted weight. So um, yeah, you'll probably um, change up the cotton or whatever. I mean, it feels really soft and whatever. I think it's just because I'm help holding two together, and um, obviously my my stitches might be a little bit tight or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, so. I'm using the white and the pink to make the one skein version and then I'm using the white and the violet to make the two skein version. Um, so yeah, that's another project. I'm hoping to finish the one skein bucket this weekend and then maybe um, work on the two skein one after that. We'll see how that goes. Okay, two more whips to go. Um, firstly, I've had this obsession for quite a number of months now about being able to knit socks and um, sorry this is my drawstring bag that I made um, and I'm not really sure why because I'm, I'm a beginner knitter and I know that you know knitting socks is a bit more of an advanced knitting skill but I've had this obsession and I just I just want to learn how to make them basically so um, I was making a pair of socks using a tin can knits pattern and that was for a a thicker yarn I can't remember the exact weight of it I think it was for an Iran yarn or it might have been a double knitting something like that it was it was a thicker yarn anyway um, and I managed to get quite far with it but I didn't like it was it had this kind of knit pearl pattern on the front of the sock and I the way that I was doing it meant that I was doing it on DPNs meant that there was always this kind of a little ladder between um, the end of the knit pearl section and the beginning of the just knitted section and it looked a bit daft and I know people say that you know you should finish a project even though it's not going to be perfect don't try to make things perfect that's a really good piece of advice and I should really follow it, but I'm like a massive perfectionist. So anyway, um, I Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful, her podcast is great. I will leave a link to it down below. She, I was watching some of her earlier episodes where she was learning how to knit socks, and um, I'd commented on one of her later episodes asking where where she learned how to do it, and she used the Winwick Winwick Mum sock along pattern, which I'll leave a link to down below. And she said it was really intuitive and there's lots of tutorials on the blog and, and things like that. And so I've been following that. So I've started a pair. Where's the label? I've left it in here. So this is out of Starcraft Head Over Heels All Stars. 
So this is the label. You'll be able to see that. Maybe there we go. And this is in the colourway splash. And this is what the yarn looks like. So it's really nice. It's got lots of pinks and peach and bits of blue. It's really really pretty. And this is 75% um, superwash wool and 95% uh, 25% nylon. Um, so I had a couple of balls of this in my stash. So I started. And these are on um, 9 inch circulars which I've always kind of been, oh, I, I don't know, because like it's really stretchy and am I going to get, like the, the stitches are stretched over the circular needle and am I going to get, you know, is that going to matter? But that's how she's doing it in the pattern and I obviously trust her judgement. So yeah, I just did a little bit of the cuff basically. I haven't got really, really far. Um, and I'm guessing that when I've got past the cuff, then it's just going to be knitting, whereas this is... Um, knit and purl ribbing at the moment so I'm having to think a little bit more about it um, I'm not sure how many inches you do of that and then go on from there so I'll let you know my progress on that I get a little bit more frustrated with knitting anyway I think knitting's a little bit slower for me anyway but maybe that's because I haven't had a lot of practice but yeah I'm using this really beautiful little feather stitch marker and I think I got that when I ordered some wool for Mr B so it's really really pretty just to kind of mark where the beginning of the row is and I've left it not on the beginning of a row but it doesn't matter so yeah we'll see how we get on with that okay and then the last project that I'm working on I've only just started and this is going to be made out of this which is Red Heart Unforgettable Boutique in the colour well it doesn't say it on the label but I know it's in pastel and it's this beautiful if I show you the inside um, it's got blues and pinks and um, light browns and greys. It's a, such a nice variegated yarn and it feels really soft. It's 100% acrylic and it's a worsted weight yarn. So I've, I bought six balls of this and I'm going to, well, I'm also testing the Waverly hooded cardigan um, and this is by Megan Makes Do. Um, so that again, this pattern is not available yet, but I will leave a link to her Ravelry page down below. Um, and I have never tested, I've t I tested obviously the, the chevron wrap for Natalie, but um, not a garment. So this is going to be an interesting experience. I've made a garment before obviously, but um, yeah. So I just did the swatch today um, and this is how it's working up. It's really beautiful, so I've just kind of got into the into the brown here, and I really, really love it. So yeah, I'm done the swatch, and then I am going to crack on and make a start on the actual cardigan. So I'll let you know how I get on with that. I don't really know how it's going to work in terms of changing between balls because it's variegated. I'm hoping it will be a little bit more intuitive than I think it might be right now but um we'll see how that goes <laughs> so there we go guys they are all of the projects that i have been working on i'm not going to do like a what i've bought section because i couldn't really gather my thoughts in terms of what i showed you last time and what i hadn't so a couple of these wall bits and pieces that i've showed you for projects are, are new anyway um yeah and i can't think of anything significant that i haven't showed you since last time so, um, I'm going to love you and leave you there. Um, I'd love to have a chat with you in the comments below, um, you know, about anything that I've discussed in this video, uh, you know, if you've got any questions about it or whatever, or if you've got any patterns that you want to recommend to me. I'm also always on the lookout for new crochet patterns. Um, I've got like over 400 things in my queue on Ravelry, and they're not all crochet, but the majority of them are crochet. Um, so yeah, because I do really, really love those. Um, so yeah, if you've got any pattern recommendations, cross stitch, crochet, knitting, please let me know, or any questions or bits of advice or whatever. More is up for that. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.